What's up guys, Mike here, and today we are going to do a full simulation of Michael Jordan's career in the modern NBA. Here are the rules I'm using, and you can pause if you want to read them. If not, enjoy. Michael Jordan is considered to be the greatest player to ever play the game of basketball. At the time of his retirement, he had racked up 6 NBA championships, 5 MVP trophies, and 10 NBA scoring titles. On the court, he was a killer, an assassin, a man who could will his team to success and always seemed to come through when it mattered the most. Yes, after his career was over, the consensus was simple. There would never be another player like Michael Jordan. No one could match his unreal athleticism, incredible natural talent, and somewhat actually insane competitive fire. But the thing about sports is that no one's legacy is really safe. A player might retire at the top, but just years later his legacy will start to fade. Just a few decades ago, Larry Bird was considered the best small forward to ever live. Now, message boards are filled with people stating that Bird would have been just an average player, or even a scrub in today's game. And that hasn't happened to Michael Jordan. Not yet, and maybe it never will. Regardless, the question is still there. How would Jordan perform in the modern NBA, with no hand check rule but new defensive schemes, against less dominant big men but more emphasis on the three point shot? As you are about to see, Jordan's career in the modern NBA would be very interesting. In the original 2002 NBA draft, Jay Williams was taken second by the Chicago Bulls. Williams, one of the greatest Duke players of all time, had a subpar rookie season in which he also suffered a motorcycle accident. He would never return to the Bulls, which leaves us with the perfect spot to drop Michael Jordan into without upsetting the rest of the NBA's balance. And so Jay Williams disappears, Jordan goes second to the Bulls, and he joins a 2002 NBA draft class highlighted by Yao Ming and Amari Stoudemire. Which also means that Chicago again has their basketball savior. In Jordan's original rookie season, he took the league by storm, averaging 28 points per game while dragging the 85 Bulls to a playoff berth. His impact on the 2003 Bulls is remarkably similar, as Jordan puts up arguably the greatest rookie season in recent history while also helping the Bulls improve by 13 wins in the process. His new Bulls make the playoffs and put up a tough fight before losing to the New Jersey Nets. In the elimination game, Jordan puts up 50 and the league takes notice, as his performance at such a young age is nothing short of incredible. And Kobe Bryant finds Jordan's performance particularly interesting. In this new NBA, Kobe is three years older than Jordan and was a first team all NBA selection. For now, he is considered the league's top shooting guard and will definitely be one of Jordan's greatest rivals throughout his career. And yes, Jordan wins Rookie of the Year over Amari Stoudemire, though the rest of the season stays the same. The Spurs still win the championship, and Tim Duncan still wins MVP. Now, speaking of rivalries, the 2003 NBA draft provides us with several new foes for Jordan's modern career, as LeBron James and Dwayne Wade join the NBA in this draft. With that said, nothing too notable changes in the draft other than the selection of Kirk Heinrich. The Bulls are now picking too late to select Heinrich, so he goes to the Knicks. Leading into the 2004 NBA season, Michael Jordan was eager to prove his greatness and lead the Bulls back into the playoffs. And then, in the third game of the season, Jordan breaks his foot, a shock to his system, as up until this point he had not missed a single game due to injury in both his college and pro career. Now, when this injury occurred in the 1986 season, the heavy recommendation from the training staff was to sit out the rest of the year to not risk further injury. Jordan ignored this recommendation because the Bulls were still contenders to make the playoffs. However, in the 2004 season, the Bulls were far removed from the playoffs and instead found themselves at the bottom of the standings. With this, the Bulls shut down Jordan for the remainder of the 2004 season and finish in last place in the entire NBA. As the loss of a rookie Kirk Heinrich also cost them a few wins, and the results of the 2004 NBA draft show that the Bulls made the correct decision to tank, as their new spot in the draft lottery lands them the number one pick. With this pick, they select Dwight Howard, pairing Jordan with one of the most dominant defensive big men in the current NBA. Moving down the draft, the Bulls also land Luol Deng, 
as they managed to trade the Phoenix Suns for the seventh pick in exchange for a second round pick and $3 million in cash. Never forget, Robert Sarver was so cheap that he actually traded away a top 10 pick for money. Which brings us to the 2005 NBA season. Leading up to a new year of basketball, fans everywhere were asking the same question. How would Michael Jordan perform after missing an entire year due to injury? The answer to this question came early, as Jordan quickly proved he was the most dominant scorer in the NBA in just his third year. For the season, he would average over 35 points per game while shooting near 50% from the floor, an incredible percentage for such a high usage rate. Jordan's ridiculous production, combined with the addition of Dwight Howard's defensive prowess, found the Bulls with an increase of 9 wins over their original 2005 mark. This increase in wins gives the Bulls the number 2 seed in the Eastern Conference and Jordan receives his first NBA first team selection, edging out Allen Iverson in the process. To add insult to injury, the Bulls destroyed Roy Iverson Sixers in the first round, before losing in six to a veteran-filled Detroit Pistons team. At this point, it seemed that the only thing holding back the Bulls' future title hopes was the lack of a good point guard to pair with Jordan in the backcourt. The new 2005 NBA Draft is almost identical to the original, and so we find ourselves skipping that and arriving at the start of the 2006 NBA season. This season, again, finds the Bulls with a much improved record, and again Michael Jordan proves that no one can stop him from putting the ball in the back. Chicago's entire offense runs through Jordan, and again he averages over 35 points per game while leading the Bulls to the second seed in the Eastern Conference. The original 2006 MVP race was filled with questions, as a clear top player never fully emerged. Things have changed, however, and Jordan's production cannot be overlooked. He takes home his first MVP, winning the award over Steve Nash. In the playoffs, the Bulls quickly dispatch the Indiana Pacers and find themselves paired up with the Miami Heat led by Dwayne Wade. This matchup gives Jordan his first chance to defeat one of his new rivals, as Wade has already been named to the NBA's second team. Unfortunately for Jordan, Wade is the one who comes out on top, as Shaquille O'Neal provides to be too much for Dwight Howard in the post, and the Bulls again are hurt by their lack of talent at the point guard spot. The Heat defeat the Bulls in seven, and Jordan begins the offseason with a new fire in his soul, a fire that will drive him to tirelessly work at his craft during the offseason. With some changes in standings during the regular season, several teams at the top of the 2006 NBA draft find themselves with new selections. The Bulls, who own the Knicks pick, find themselves at the 5 spot, after Heinrich again helps New York add a few more wins. This leads to Atlanta selecting Lamarcus Aldridge at the 3 spot. Picking 5th, the Bulls find themselves with a clear opportunity to upgrade the guard spot that has been causing them problems. So they select Brandon Roy, a combo guard whose talents mesh well with Jordan. The Bulls entered the 2007 season with championship aspirations, but a lot of doubts. Yes, they had Michael Jordan, but the rest of their roster was full of question marks. Would rookie Brandon Roy be able to find success paired in the backcourt with Jordan? Could Lou Aldang be the glue guy that Chicago needed? And would Dwight Howard step up his game and become one of the NBA's best centers? Playing in the incredibly weak Eastern Conference? The answer to these questions was an emphatic yes. Despite their young age, the Bulls begin to develop veteran-like team chemistry. Roy learns from Michael, Dwight makes his first all-star team, and Luol fills in whenever the team needs him. Chicago rolls to 60 wins and the top seed in the East, as Jordan wins his second MVP over Dirk Nowitzki. Sorry Dirk, your 25 points and 9 rebounds a game were solid, but they can't compete with the monster numbers that Jordan puts up. In this season, Michael averages 32 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists, and 3 steals a game while solidifying his spot as the best player in the NBA. And if there were any doubts, the Bulls find themselves matched up against the LeBron James-led Cavaliers in the Eastern Conference Finals. LeBron puts up a heroic effort, but he's no match for Jordan and his young but talented teammates. The Bulls win in five and find themselves in the NBA Finals for the first time, facing off against the San Antonio Spurs. Unfortunately for Jordan, a veteran-led team again proves to be his downfall. The Spurs exploit the Bulls' talent at the power forward spot and dominate the boards, as Tim Duncan has a monster series on both ends of the floor and leads the Spurs to a six-game series victory over Chicago. Still, the future is very bright in the Windy City. The 2007 NBA Draft brings us some new changes to the current NBA landscape. The Sacramento Kings luck into the first overall pick, selecting Greg Oden. 
The Milwaukee Bucks get future All-Star Al Horford, and the Portland Trailblazers land future Defensive Player of the Year's Joachim Noah. As the Bulls now have the 15th pick. Speaking of that pick, once upon a time, the Chicago Bulls signed a European star to help them get over the hump in Jordan's final three championship years. Tony Kukoc was a key role player for the Bulls in the late 90s, and the current Bulls look to emulate their past success. So Chicago trades their 2007 first round pick to the Spurs in exchange for Louis Scola, stealing him away from the Houston Rockets with a clearly better offer, which leads us to the 2007-2008 NBA season and to challenges for the Chicago Bulls. In the offseason, the Boston Celtics added Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen to form a big three along with Paul Pierce, providing a clear threat to the Bulls' title hopes. With that said, the Bulls find themselves full of talent, as their new playoff-hardened young core continued to develop and thrive. Jordan, of course, had another otherworldly season, averaging over 30 points per game to go along with six rebounds and six assists, though this year Kobe Bryant was awarded with the MVP. This didn't matter to Jordan though, as his main goal was to win his first NBA championship. Entering the playoffs as the one seed, Jordan knew that this was his chance to taste greatness. However, the path to greatness is filled with obstacles, and the first major obstacle came in the form of the Boston Celtics. The Eastern Conference Finals series between Boston and Chicago was a bloodbath, with both teams trading wins to set up a Game 7. In this Game 7, with the score tied with just 20 seconds remaining, Jordan finds himself double teamed and gives the ball up to Brandon Roy. Roy sinks the biggest shot of his life, a three to give the Bulls the lead, then tips the ball away in the final seconds to send the Bulls to the finals. The story of the 2008 NBA Finals was of course, Jordan vs Kobe. The two NBA legends would finally face off each other on the game's biggest stage. And with the loss of his third straight MVP in the back of his mind, Jordan raises his game to another level. He proves that his name belongs among the NBA's all-time greats, outdueling Kobe on the way through his first NBA championship. And with young talent all throughout the Bulls roster, this title appeared to be the first of many. With their success, the Bulls find themselves at the bottom of the 2008 NBA draft, not the top. So Derrick Rose becomes a trailblazer. The 2008-2009 season found the Bulls at the height of their power. They win a staggering 70 games, as their talent is just overwhelming. Luol Deng and Luis Scola prove to be two of the top role players in the game of basketball. Brandon Roy begins to show flashes of true greatness, averaging 20 points per game beside Jordan. Dwight Howard realizes his full potential as a defensive monster averaging a near three blocks per game to go along with 14 rebounds. And again, Michael Jordan keys the Bulls offense and perimeter defense, winning his third MVP over his Eastern Conference rival LeBron James while leading the Bulls to the best record in NBA history. And this incredible regular season success translates into postseason success. Nobody can stop the Bulls this season, as they lose just two total games in their successful quest to repeat as NBA champions. The victory was made all the more sweeter in the finals, as Jordan again bested Kobe and had the media convinced that Kobe could not win a ring without Shaq. The several changes at the top of the standings have little effect on the 2009 NBA draft. Things stay basically the same, and the Bulls still grab Tosh Gibson with the Denver Nuggets pick. And so, the Bulls begin the 2010 NBA season as a seemingly unstoppable juggernaut. Jordan was the best player in the game, Howard was the league's top center, and Brandon Roy had become an all-star shooting guard. And then everything changed. Late in the season, the Bulls lose Brandon Roy to a knee injury that will destroy his career. Roy tries his best to return to the playoffs, but his knee just can't hold up. Still, the Bulls manage to sneak their way into the finals after an incredible run of games by Jordan. But this time, Kobe and the Lakers are just too much, defeating the Bulls in six games as the Lakers' depth proves to be the deciding factor. To make matters worse for Jordan, LeBron James is rewarded with his first MVP, again sending Jordan into a summer where all he can think about is revenge. The NBA draft again proves to be almost a carbon copy of the original one, which again does not matter to Jordan and the Bulls. All they can think about was returning to the finals and winning another ring. Despite the loss of Brandon Roy, the Bulls roster was still full of elite talent. This season, Luol Deng averages 18 points per game to help with the scoring load. Taj Gibson and Luis Scola prove to be a great one-two punch at the power forward spot. Dwight Howard sets a career high with 22 points per game to go along with his third straight Defensive Player of the Year award. And with the loss of Roy, the Bulls find themselves using a 
combination of Ronnie Brewer and Kyle Korver to pair with Jordan, a move that proves to be more successful than anyone would have thought. The Bulls surprise everyone and break their own wins record, winning 71 games despite the addition of the Big 3 in Miami. And in the playoffs, the Bulls proved that they were indeed on another level than everyone else. As the Heat still struggle to reach their full potential, the Bulls take advantage and win a hard-fought series in 6 to reach the NBA Finals. There, they find themselves matched up with Dirk Nowitzki, a man who has set the NBA playoffs on fire. It doesn't matter. Dirk wasn't playing against a team trying to find itself. He was playing against a Michael Jordan-led Chicago Bulls team that was in its fifth straight NBA Finals. The Bulls used their championship experience to add another ring to their collection, giving Jordan his third championship trophy to go along with the 2011 NBA MVP. And as if their luck couldn't get any better, the Bulls draft in the same spot as their original 2011 draft, and select Jimmy Butler in hopes that his incredible work ethic will lead to some serious development. And it will. Quick note, remember that Jordan's full year off from basketball is being skipped in this simulation, though he will still only play the last 17 games of the 2012 season and will be incredibly rusty in the playoffs. And so, at the start of the 2012 NBA season, the Bulls again were determined to add another championship banner to further their argument as one of the all-time NBA dynasties. But they had one problem. For the first 65 games of the season, no one could find Michael Jordan. Some say they saw Jordan playing baseball in the minor leagues, which seemed utterly ridiculous and impossible. Others, most notably this one pretty cool YouTuber, say he was forced to sit out due to excessive gambling. What really happened to Jordan, we may never know, though we do know the impact his loss had on the team. The Bulls still managed to finish as the third seed in the East, but are bounced in the second round against the Miami Heat as LeBron outduels the rusty Jordan on his way to his first NBA championship. The 2012 NBA draft has one massive change, as Damian Lillard becomes a Toronto Raptor. With that said, yet again despite his overwhelming success, Michael Jordan found himself haunted by his exit in the playoffs. He spent his summer working on his game, and was ready to reclaim his title as the world's best basketball player. And he would have some help, as the loss of Brandon Roy's salary allowed the Bulls to sign Goran Dracic in the 2012 NBA offseason, giving Jordan some massive help in the back. And so, the 2013 season began as a welcome back tour for Michael Jordan, though the team had its struggles. Dwight Howard was playing through injuries, and Goran Dragic struggled to live up to the massive expectations put on him by Jordan. The Bulls do manage to win 61 games, but this was the year of LeBron and the Miami Heat. The Heat end the year with the best record in the NBA. LeBron is still named the league's MVP, and Miami uses their newfound championship experience to help knock the Bulls off in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals, which to Michael Jordan was simply unacceptable. His desire to win was now at an all-time high. And so, from the beginning of the 2014 NBA season to the end, the Bulls performed like a well-oiled machine. Goran Dragic came into his own and averaged 20 a game. Dwight Howard continued to anchor the Bulls' inside defense and won his fourth Defensive Player of the Year. And Jimmy Butler, now spending his summers training with Jordan in the offseason, surprised basketball fans everywhere with his sudden surge into the Bulls' starting lineup. With that said, the Bulls' success still relied on Jordan, and he came through. Motivated by his missed chances at greatness, Jordan used the 2014 season to further his legacy. Night in and night out, he played as if he was possessed. And at the end of the season, the MVP trophy was again his. The MVP award was nice, but the real prize was another championship, which he got. After dispatching the Big Three in the Eastern Conference Finals while sending LeBron back to Cleveland, Jordan and the Bulls again found themselves in the NBA Finals. This time, Jordan got his revenge on the team who had denied him his first ring, leading the Bulls to his fourth championship and quieting the haters who had popped up in his championship absence. Which which brings us to the 2015 NBA season, what would be Jordan's last season as a Chicago Bull and his final chance to win another championship. The team certainly had its struggles, as Dwight Howard missed 41 games due to injury, leaving the Bulls desperately thin at the center position. Despite this, Jimmy Butler continued to grow as a player and surprised everyone with his development, as he was named to his first All-Star team while 
while averaging 20 points per game. And while 2015 was originally known as the year Steph Curry broke through into superstardom, the new 2015 season would not play out the same way. Fully aware that his future legacy as the greatest player of all time was on the line, Jordan went out and captured his sixth MVP trophy, as his Bulls finished with the best record in the East despite the loss of Dwight. But still, Jordan needed Dwight for his final championship run, and he would return. Howard continued to build upon his own NBA legacy as he played through injuries throughout the playoffs, giving the Bulls the defensive presence they needed down low. Matched up against an injury-riddled Cleveland team in the Eastern Conference semifinals, Goran Dragic has the series of his life, averaging 25 points per game as the defense keys in on Jordan and Butler. The Bulls' series win against the Cavs brings them to the Eastern Conference Finals against the Toronto Raptors. The Raptors were built around a three-headed monster of Kyle Lowry, Damian Lillard, and DeMar DeRozan, but those three were sorely lacking in defensive ability. The Bulls, meanwhile, had plenty of defense behind Jordan, Butler, and Howard. On top of some pretty incredible offense, they sweep the Raptors, setting up a 2015 NBA Finals matchup against the Golden State Warriors, which set the stage for Game 6, a must-win for the Bulls. With Chicago Chicago up 3-2 in the series, if they lost this one at home they would have to return to Golden State with almost no momentum. And with one minute left, it appeared that the Bulls worst fears would come true as Golden State led by 4 with the ball and a chance to put the nail in the coffin. But then, Michael Jordan reminded everyone why he is the greatest player of all time. With 45 seconds remaining, Jordan rebounded a Klay Thompson miss and pulled up for 3 in transition. The next possession, the Warriors ran down the clock and eventually forced up a shot from the corner. It was no good, and you can guess what happened next. To Jordan, time winding down. You gotta protect the area for the win. Yeah! You can't believe it! He does it again! Michael Jordan, game winner here! Michael Jordan in the final seconds again! And so yes, Michael Jordan celebrated his fifth NBA championship and was able to retire in peace and not return to the game as a 38 year old man. Now before we take a look at Jordan's new legacy, let's take a look at Dwight Howard's. With achievements like this, Dwight would be considered an all time great, and in this simulation he was, as he became Michael Jordan's modern day Scottie Pippen. Now in his 13 seasons with the Bulls, Jordan outperformed all of his rivals convincingly ending with 10 All-NBA First Team Awards, 6 NBA MVPs, and most importantly, 5 NBA Championships, proving that even while playing in a different era, Michael Jordan would still be remembered as the greatest basketball player to ever walk this planet. And thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and to all of my subscribers, in the words of Kevin Durant, you the real MVP. And to everyone who hasn't already subscribed, also in the words of Kevin Durant, please subscribe to Mike Corzemba's YouTube channel. He makes some great NBA content. And as always, guys, have an awesome day and cue the music.